I would appreciate that. And let us welcome to the screen tonight, welcome aboard for this Portugal Calling webinar, uh, moving money around the world, especially here to Portugal, uh, with the help of Spartan FX. And Sarah Davy, good evening to you, Sarah, in the UK, I take it. How are you this evening? I'm good, thank you, Carl. I think it is, a, I, I don't know if it's for Americans, but it's certainly a British thing to always talk about the weather. I think we'll be doing it even in the summer, to be honest. Yeah, so how is it, how is it there tonight, Sarah? <laughs> oh, it's a little bit miserable. It's just, okay. uh, yeah, very dull and overcast well, and a bit cool. Lovely to see you as the ray of sunshine of the <laughs> currency world gracing our screens this evening. So there's a number of areas we will take a look at tonight, uh, people's main reasons for moving money. And we'll go into some detail with these. Um, there's also uh, keeping an eye on exchange rate movements, the actual business, the process of transferring money. And uh, one of our favorite subjects, comparing and contrasting people's experience <laughs> with their own banks as well, uh, which we'll probably finish with. There will be a chance to uh, ask questions after we finish the recording, if you prefer to do that. But do, in the meantime, if you have a question that you'd like me to share with Sarah uh, throughout this uh, conversation this evening, do pop it in the chat and I'll make sure that gets to Sarah. Good evening to you, Debbie. Frank, Laurie and Donovan, who've all said hello this evening. There's an hola from California this evening uh, from uh, Santa Marta de Portugalo. Thank you very much, Laurie, for that. Uh, Santa Maria, California. So uh, a couple of people at least in from California tonight. And great news from Debbie. So excited. My D7 appointment with VFS is in Washington uh, next week. That's fantastic news. Thank you very much for that. Any more milestones, put them in the chat and we'll celebrate those with you. Back to you, though, Sarah. Um, and a little bit of an intro to what you do at uh, Spartan FX, if you will. No, absolutely. For those who don't know who we are, um, the Spartan FX, uh, so we specialise in international payments. So it's moving your money um, from one bank to another, from one country to another. And that can be, we'll probably touch mainly on selling US dollars and buying euros, but we do cover lots of different currency pairings, whether you're um, exchanging Canadian dollars, uh, pounds, Australian dollars, Swiss francs, wherever it may be. We're converting them into euros or other currencies as a whole. Um, but obviously, typically, we're talking about, obviously, you're moving to Portugal and you're going to need euros. Um, and we help individuals and we help businesses. And as Carl touched on, some of the things we're going to discuss today is really that we help with, A, getting you a really good exchange rate, but also helping you make it less stressful when you're transferring money. It's very stressful moving country. So it's just one less thing to worry about Um letting us watch what's happening in the markets and help control your budget. So we'll go over that in more detail. Um, I've been in the foreign exchange industry now for about 17 years. A lot of our um, colleagues, Ben, Neil, Steve, that you'll see on the Dream Team show, um, they've been all doing it similar amounts of time. So there's a lot of experience and hopefully dealing with, well, they've dealt with thousands of customers in a similar position to you so that we're learning along the way and hopefully we can give that experience back to you and make it easier. Fantastic. And uh, as you can see on their Platinum Service Award from FIFO and most of the people, if not all of them who you mentioned there, have their own fan clubs of um, people who love working with them. And I see as well here, there are people here who've heard you speak before and are familiar with the subject, but I think there's always something new that comes up and that's why presumably a few people have joined us again uh, who may already be customers with you. Very easy to an open account with you, but I see there are probably pre-existing customers here who mm -hmm. are back uh, to hear those little nuggets of information that ultimately can save them a lot of money um, if you if you tune into the uh, information and advice that uh, Sarah will be giving tonight. So Absolutely. I mean, with... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Um, some of the things it may seem like repetition, but we do encounter them again and again. Um, obviously, maybe when we first started speaking about it, people are at different stages, they're very early stages and think, right, that's something I need to do. I need to think about that. And then they forget about it. And yeah. then they come another six months down the line. Oh, I really need to do that. And it just jogs their memory. But again, some of the things that we're coming up against, we see it all the time. So it's just making people aware and that you're not make making those kind of mistakes. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, quite a few people in from California, it would seem tonight. Also, Oregon and Pismo Beach. I'm not sure where that is. I suspect that might be California as well, but I'm sure I'll be told. So let's get into a few of those reasons why people move money uh, to here in Portugal. Really case studies, right, of uh, people's experiences and how you've helped people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes people think this sort of service is only if you're doing large sums of money, but that's not the case because, as I said, we'll go into it more detail around the process of moving money. So that's really applicable to anything that you're doing. And we've got clients using us for a number of different reasons. So 
in this sort of journey, it's, you know, you're paying for, say, your lawyer's fees, you're paying visa fees, um, you're paying for a NIF, um, you're opening a Portuguese bank account, and you might need to put a small amount in initially, or then you're moving money regularly to top that account up. Um, you may need to rent a property. And as we've heard on some of the Dream Team um, shows, they're often needing, what, six, 12 months in advance. So there are larger sums that you'll need to be transferring in that aspect. Um, but even just on a regular basis, whether it be a mortgage transfer and you've bought a property, um, pension transfers, you might want to buy a car. Um, I think we've touched on sort of, I think some of the ones are a little bit more out there that we've seen is someone's <laughs> bought a boat. Um, they paid an art gallery, really anywhere that you're given bank details an IBAN or an invoice, we can make that payment payment to essentially. Very good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, as you, as you mentioned there, buying and renting property. I've got a few notes here um, that I'd like to ask you about. Um, paying for something like lawyer's fees, for example, you could do that, couldn't you, um, using your Spartan FX account. Um, golden visa. Um, I've, got a, I've got a note about the golden visa. What's the situation? How have you helped people in a golden visa situation? Yes. Yeah, so with the golden visa, we can still help customers and we are, they're still using us for that. But the difference with the golden visa is that the stipulation as part of the criteria for the visa is that the money needs to come from basically a bank account in Portugal. It needs to have a PT band. Oh, okay. That's where the money needs to come from. So our accounts don't have a PT band, um, but we can still help exchange that money. So we can do the exchange, we can get the better rate, put it into your Portuguese bank account, and then you transfer it on. So we're yeah. still involved in the chain, but that's the stipulation of the visa. Um, but also the accounts that you have with us are in your name as well. So again, that helps with the audit trail um, as part of the visa as well. Very good. OK, and I think we should go into a little bit of jargon busting um, or, or, or a little bit deeper into this uh, PT IBAN. The IBAN number is, is the very, very long number. I mean, most people eventually remember their bank account number. I think I still remember some of my old ones that are eight numbers long. But the IBAN is considerably longer. Um, and it's an, it's one of those acronyms you're going to need to learn alongside NIF, NIS and SNS. IBAN is another one of them. Tell us more about it, if you will, Sarah. And, and the fact that some people who work in banks in let alone uh, you know retail consumers some people who work in banks in the united states don't know what an iban is do they as we've discovered in the past no that is true as well so i mean you sort of break it down but it it does make sense obviously pt is the country um, and then within that, there's certain elements that are then unique to you, then unique to, say, the branch that you're signed up with. There's all sort of identifications along that kind of IBAN that makes that, as I said, a, either unique number to you. Um, and when we've had customers go into their bank in America and a lot of um, well, bank tellers have never made international payments before. And often they're not quite sure how to make that payment to using an iBand. It's not familiar for them. Um, and we often have people ring up and say they're not sure. And we've spoken to the bank teller and explained how to make that payment. Um, so it, it does does actually happen. <laughs> it sounds like a Monty Python sketch, doesn't it? British yeah. British company call American Bank to, to describe the but even, even myself. Um, so I've got a, a Portuguese bank account now. And, you know, obviously we deal this all the time. So I'm familiar. But in the UK, we have an account number and a sort code. So it is completely different yeah. when you're putting it in. And um, the way that I had to format it when I put it into my Barclays app, you know, just to test it out before I obviously use Spartan. It, just to see what it would look like for a client, what they would see. It isn't mm -hmm. easy. It doesn't no, give right. a good description of how you need to format that. Yeah, yeah. And I think from a sort of cryptography security point of view, it's quite a good idea to have a long number. But given that it is a lot of numbers, there's also the uh, margin of error there is, is uh, widened as well, I think, with how that can go wrong. So I know you're very careful to check the IBANs uh, when these are being done and even testing with a little small payment first to make sure those details are the same and then can be cut and pasted or, or repeated in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the things we do, uh, we adv we give guidance to you and, and recommend that you do, um, but say that you don't use us I would say that this is something that you do need to do is one, we always ring the beneficiary um, and just check those details over the phone because fortunately there's human error. The, um, there is fraud. Emails can get intercepted. So as long as it's a valid IBAN number and say you were using an online provider and you put that or even your bank and you put it in, it would go to that account. Even if 
someone had put a digit wrong or someone had intercepted and changed that I band. So mm. it's just making sure that the details are correct. Um, and again, a small test. If you've never sent a payment to that account before and you are going to send maybe larger sums, even not larger sums, but, you know, it'd be better to lose $100 than a couple of thousand dollars, you yeah. know, if you've not transferred to that account before. Excellent. OK, so first key point then. Um, using Spun isn't just for the big amounts of money. Um, it, it, is for, it is for that reason, but not only that reason. So um, beyond the uh, purchase of a house or a car for that matter, or, or or parting with big amounts of money, let's say you've got to put a big deposit and some uh, advance payments on a rental, you can use Spartan for that. Um, but also uh, the example you used to give um, a little while back, probably the weather's changed, so we don't say it so much now, but uh, the pool guy, you can even pay the pool guy as long as it's a euro transaction and they've got an IBAN to receive it on. Yeah. Um, it can be any kind of transaction, right? Uh, Absolutely. I mean, some probably want to be taking cash, but... <laughs> <laughs> but that's true that's true if you're if your builder or, or somebody that's sort of maintenance or something on your house and and you know as i said you're paying them while you're perhaps you've bought somewhere or you've got something and you're not in the country how are you going to pay them they'll probably give you a bank account so again i mean we've had customers again everybody's different and and, and some people um find easier than others um and there's a right service for everyone but we've got one customer who had a has a portuguese bank account still living in america but wasn't very a fay with their online banking for their portuguese account so it was easier for her to just use us and when we just pay any third party until she gets over there and wants to use her bank i mean she can still use us there's no problem with that but obviously she might find it easy when she actually gets to portugal okay uh, so we'll come back to the mechanics of exactly how to do that a little bit later on but let's move on now oh thanks LaRonda for that question or, or possibly just a sharing a little bit of feedback there keep that coming in the chat everybody and we'll get any questions you've got to uh, Sarah during this conversation and of course when we finish recording you'll have a chance to uh, hang out and ask uh, more personal questions that you don't record want recorded as well if you want to um, exchange rate movements and this is all important isn't it and everything um, I think what people want, everybody in, in the United States wants parity to return <laughs> and it's keeping an eye on that possible situation. Um, how do you manage these exchange rate movements and what would you say to people who are, who are understandably concerned about that? Because it can make a big deal, a difference. Could, it could mean it could cover the cost of a car um, having bought the home. Uh, in Abs some absolutely, absolutely. I mean, obviously on larger sums of money, the difference is going to be bigger. So on like a 250,000 euro house purchase or transfer, a rate movement could be 32,000 US dollars. Wow. You see on a smaller amount, we're talking less sums of money. But the, the rate movements that we have seen in the last sort of two years are that dramatic. Um, so it is a real consideration. Um, I would say that people shouldn't underestimate it. A lot of the times, which is understandable, we find that people forget or don't realise how much it impacts them and they forget about it. So it's a case of I need to make a payment and I need to make it now. So that's fine and we can absolutely do that. But obviously you've got little control over what exchange rate you're really going to get. It's just going to be on the day whether it's better through your bank or us. But actually buying it at, at the right time, that's a completely different thing. Yeah. Um, and if you have in these scenarios, a lot of clients have wider time frames. So we're not just looking at it in the in the in the next week or two weeks. People are, are looking at this 12 months, six months in advance of actually needing any money or moving to Portugal. Yeah. Um, so I think the key thing, I've got a graph actually that might help a little bit. Um okay, always good to see a graph if i can share a screen um, and many of us will pre pretend we understand it as well but you'll you'll be there you'll, you'll be there to talk us through <laughs> thank you thank yeah. you Sarah, for that um i'm literally just leaving my local credit union says laronda after having them do a wire transfer to my spartan fx account so that works um wiring from a credit union to spartan fx mm -hmm. um even with all of the written details there were still a bunch of questions what bank is this What's the address? What's the transfer for? And you will get asked these questions, of course. So thank you for that feedback uh, on um, what you've done. Well, just just now, basically, LaRonda, thank you for that. Fingers crossed, agree with you uh, that it all goes smoothly. But sort with that. OK, so what's this telling us here then, Sarah? So this is um, selling um, US dollars and buying euros, the exchange rate over the last 12 months. Um, so as as you can see, essentially, what all I'm really showing is that there's obviously a lot of different lot of movement, lots of I suppose peaks and troughs, mm. and you know if obviously hindsight's a great thing, but if you look back on this graph, 
October is really your best time to be to have bought euros. Obviously, hindsight is a good thing. But what I would probably say is at the moment is that if you can, the closer you obviously you can get to parity, that's the best rates. A lot of clients um, are doing a number of things. One, they're buying when there are those spikes, when they do see it move in their favor. You maybe don't have to buy all of your euros in advance. You could do some. They're doing maybe a quarter or they're doing a half. And then again, that just helps spread that risk. And overall, as an average, you could be still getting a better rate than waiting. Um, we've got options where you can, um, again, it depends on your situation. At the moment, you're calculating your move to Portugal. You're working out how much it's costing you. What rate are you using when you calculate that? Because that's probably your base rate. And then what is your budget and how much more expensive can it get? Or how, if the rate moves when does it become unaffordable? Those are the sort of questions you really need to ask yourself. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're factoring in. So for some people, what they've done is we've got an op option where you can do what they call orders, like limit orders, that you can either watch out for a better rate of exchange um, and you can automatically buy that currency, or we can actually keep an eye on the market going the other way. So what you could say is, I can't afford for the rate to drop by more than 5%, we'll put an order in and just keep an eye on that. And if it does drop, then we could be buying euro, euro so that it doesn't get any more expensive for you. So there's those sort of things that we're doing to just try and help with your time when you've maybe got a longer time frame. Um, if you're buying a property, for example, we can fix the rate for a future payment. So often the process to buy a property you sign the document you have to pay a 10 percent deposit you usually complete in six to eight or 12 weeks time um what's the rate going to be then how much is my property going to cost me then if you want peace of mind security and to control your budget we could fix the rate at the time you pay your deposit for that for the rate and for the date in the future very good so okay. there are options around i mean you can wait and see what happens and buy as and when you need it that's with any scenario but there are tools that we have in place that will allow you to either fix the rate or buy some or all of your euros in advance and hold them on account. You don't need to have a Portuguese bank account to do that. We hold the funds on account free of charge. And if you were using your bank, for example, in the US to exchange money and you don't have a Portuguese bank account, you've got nowhere to put the euros. So it's just giving you a few more options that might, might just help you control the price of your euros and how much your move costs you. Um, I would say the, a lot of customers do tend to buy euros in advance. Um, they do it because they don't want things to become more expensive. As I said, some do a quarter, then they do a, or a half. Um, they're just doing it just to make sure that it doesn't become, as I said, more expensive. Um, not to go into which detail because I know people will watch this back and things will change. But I would say the general thing that we're looking at this year is, again, inflation data and interest rate announcements. Yeah, We initially thought that maybe the Fed would cut interest rates in March. Um, but although the inflation data has come out, um, which would allow them to do it, they want it more consistent data to come out. Um, they don't want to do it and then find that that it hasn't had the right impact and inflation starts to creep up again. So they wanted to be a little bit more consistent. But I think as soon as they're happy and they see that that's working, then they will look to cut interest rates. Um, so it could be in the next maybe three to six months. Um, right. And then we would see the US dollar weaken. Um, the ECB are in a similar um, position because they will look to cut interest rates. But I think given historically what they've done, they tend to wait for other people. Um, to see how that impacts them before they start to make those changes. And I think also the economy is slightly better in the US as well. So those are the things we're looking at that could make changes. Um, but again, it depends on your situation. Are you moving money in the next month? Are you moving money in the next six months, 12 months? That's what you need to bear in mind because if you're moving money in the next six to 12 months, the rates at the moment could be at good levels compared to where they'll be in the in the future as well. I mean, nobody's got a crystal ball, so no, no. <laughs> you've laid this back. Before you ask, yes, she but, has uh, a crystal ball. <laughs> um, the, the, the key thing really, as I said, is just to make sure that things don't become more expensive and they become affordable for you. And it's also just a bit of control. I mean, when you know, in your own life, whenever you're budgeting for anything, 
it you know you've got control over that generally to a certain degree i mean a lot of people do so obviously the move is slightly more expensive than they anticipated but that's not talking about the exchange rate that's talking about just a few extra expense here or there yeah but the exchange rate is another element that you need to factor in when you're when you're looking at your and your budgets great okay so thank you for your questions and comments debbie donovan and larry we'll come back to those um and the, so the second key point there then is keeping an eye on the exchange rates and how that can be managed how the stress of how the con, how the concern about that and missing out can be managed and when you say buying in advance you mean buying now ahead of when you need mm. the money and then holding it on account yes. although if you do want to fix a future a purchase or contract that can also be done and the and the wonderful thing about this as as you'll hear from some of the feedback i'm sure from members of this community is this is a conversation you can have on an ongoing basis with your nominated account manager um if you if you want any of this explained to you in greater detail or you want to have that ongoing conversation of should i shouldn't i the account manager will help with that, right, Sarah? Yeah, abs absolutely. And, you know, even if you start talking to us now, it's great because then we can at least get to know you, get to know about your situation, your time frames, money mm. you have available, because that will all impact as well what options are available. And as I said, it might not be right right now, but that's fine. At least talk it through. We're aware of it all. And then, you know, we're proactive and can get back in touch with you, but equally, you know where you stand and then can come back to us in a, in a future date as, as well. And I think also when I talk about some of the other things that people use us to pay for, it just gets you familiar with the team, with your account manager, you get to know us, you get to know how it works. Yeah. As I said, I've moved some to my Portuguese bank account. I have new Steve that you'll see on the dream team. It's great. I just rang up, Steve, can you transfer that money for me? I felt like I was in a movie. It's... Yeah. <laughs> Yes. move the money now yeah <laughs> um but it was just easy i mean yes i could have done it myself we have an online uh, platform but it was really just easy and it, it's just nice that someone can take care of that for me <laughs> well we've got we've got questions about that which is great because we'll move on now to the nuts and bolts the process of transferring money and how that works and uh, it was interesting because uh LaRonda did say when when she was at the uh credit union they were asking questions. And this is all about compliance, isn't it? And these are some of the issues that people might face when transferring money. Uh, tell us about some of those things and how you deal with them, Sarah. Yeah, because that's the other thing as well. You know, some a lot of people will probably just use their bank because they don't they don't know any other options. But people can still encounter problems or even if they use an online provider, because um, really there are anti-money laundering regulations that we have to abide by mm. and they have become stricter over the years and especially because of covid i would say because more and more things are going online they've had to increase that um and generally anything really over ten thousand, you need to be providing some sort of documentation now you might think well i've only done small amounts that's fine but over a period of time those amounts could add up to maybe ten thousand, or you've done x amount of transfers and there's a not necessarily a trigger of a certain amount but what we really should be checking if someone's doing i don't know 20 transfers in the space of x number of months you yeah. would just check to see what's going on just to make sure that those payments were legitimate. So anywhere in those sort of um, scenarios, even if it's on small amounts, but generally definitely on the larger amounts, there needs to be some sort of documentation um, exchanging hands. And as far as, you know, just around what's the proof of the source of funds, how did you acquire your money um, and what is the reason for the transfers? Again, it's all around anti-money uh, laundering, make sure that you have acquired your money in a legitimate way and whatever you're buying is legitimate as well. And what will happen is that it may be like an online provider, for example, it may be that you've exchanged your money, but they won't release it until they've got those documents. Or banks, for example, You've made a transfer through your bank. The receiving bank has flagged the payment, wants more information, and then that delays the payment on that end until the um, original bank sends that information. So, again, that takes time, and banks are not fast talking to each other either. I mean, yeah. I'm sure when you're trying to talk to your bank, it's not the fastest either, so you can imagine. But, again, it's very difficult because, you know, if it is larger sums of money, where is my money, you know? talking to somebody it's quite stressful if you haven't seen it arrive in the account that you're expecting we've had a couple of clients that have come to us who one client had tried to use online provider wise and to pay deposit for a property and their money had been stopped they struggled to get into contact with them I think they held the money for nearly two weeks um, and they were getting really quite stressed because they um, 
needed that money to pay for deposit. Fortunately for them, they had more money. So mm. they set up with us and paid. So they paid using us for the deposit while the money was still being in he- is still being held. So again, what's the reasons for your transfer? How quickly do you need to get the money there? What's it there for? If you can't get the money there on time, what does that mean? Are there implications? Will it cost you more? You know, we've had a client who tried to buy a car, their bank, for example, it took them about a week to transfer that money. They missed the deadline. They couldn't buy the car. They had to rent a car. You know, it just adds that extra hassle that if you're expecting it to come quite quickly because maybe compliance or certain things can happen that will stop stop those payments. And it's good to be ahead of those because the key message you've delivered uh, time after time and quite rightly is better to do these things and get the ducks in a row sooner rather than later. Because if you do it, if you open an account now, you can have the conversations and be ready, but you can't you can't use it as a time machine if you've no. already left the country, for example. That's another instance, isn't it? Um, or if you've left it too late, it can become very stressful. So I'm sure you're going to um, suggest that people open an account or have the conversation with you sooner rather than later. And this um, anecdote we've heard previously, when people have left it a bit late, um, haven't haven't made the correct preparations, and have had to fly home to sort things out back home with their banks, right? Absolutely. So, you know, if you're in America and you're moving money, it probably works fine because you're there. Or mm. maybe at that point, you're only doing smaller sums of money. Yeah. And then what happens is you come to, so say, for example, you move to Portugal, or you're renting, and then suddenly you decide that you want to buy a property maybe 12 months down the line. Now you've got a larger sum to transfer over. All of a sudden, your bank will be like, well, that's a larger sum. So again, going back to the compliance, which is rightly so, you wouldn't want someone to be able to just transfer a large sum out of your <laughs> out of your yeah. account um they need a little bit more authorization i mean we had a client in the uk that wanted to move a large sum i think it was over a million the head bank manager had to be there to authorize the money so you know there's more checks around larger sums which is understandable but frustrating if you're not in the country that, that is like a scene to, from a movie that, that... form or um, maybe you need maybe it's as simple as you need an international card reader, which you can get in branch. Yeah. Um, so there's certain things that you might need or that you forget that um, your bank maybe has a limit on what it can transfer. One client ha- limit was I think it was about 70, 70,000 US dollars a month that they could transfer. Um, online banking, they usually have a limit of about 10,000. So yeah. again, what what is it you're doing you know if you're buying a property and you're trying to do online banking you've got to make a payment every day for two weeks or that customer with the limit of seventy thousand, it would have taken them six months to buy that property you know things like that that actually if you do the research before you go and find out what you need to do you might be able to avoid those situations yeah and there's no such thing as silly questions because it's better to ask a silly question sooner rather than later rather than have a load of stress when and when everything's piling up because you'll have more than money transfer to worry about in the last few days and weeks of your move. Um, on the matter then of um, money movements um, and the mechanics of working with Spartan FX before we go to comparisons with banks. Uh, thanks, Debbie, for this. I transferred quite a sum to Spartan FX on Monday. I'm working with Ben. I've not asked him, but is there a, somewhere I can log into Spartan FX to check to see? when it has arrived and when it has gone to my millennium bank account update says debbie i found my spartan fx account number but when i try to log in i have not set up a login and password on your website so you have to set up an account and it is fairly straightforward as you said earlier on you you can move your own money you can log in and and, and, and monitor these things but you have to do that first uh, setting up of the account right yes that's correct so um it is similar to a bank account. You can log in and you can view it like you can. You can see um, your money there in the account like you would when you're online banking um, and you can make payments out yourself and you can exchange and do it all yourself as well. Yeah. Um, but I would say a majority of our customers do tend to just speak to the team to get them to do it for them and even yeah. make the transfer. But as I said, if you want to look at the money, you can. I think that gives peace of mind as well. The other thing as well is we have more tracking on the money as well. Um, so what that means is that when the money's um, put into a, the beneficiary bank account, we know when it's there and we can let you know when it's there. So that's quite useful but- when you're paying third parties, especially if you're trying to get something there very quickly. Like, for example, there was a client who was buying a property off a builder um someone else had put another offer in as well but he was willing to honor her 
uh, offer as long as she could get their money there as quickly as possible now this is like friday yes and she wants she wants the money there on monday which is obviously more difficult because you've got the, the saturday sunday um but we managed to get it into the account on the friday and we had the proof and she could send that over and she felt happier with with that as well or somebody saying i haven't received the money and you can say well actually our our records show that it has left and it, and it should be with you well that's the other thing as well i mean you know if you're sending to a third party obviously you hope that they're genuine and legit but yeah i mean who knows if they said that how would you prove that i mean you'd have to probably get some sort of legal um team involved to for them to show their records but yeah. at least you've got the proof to say yep yeah, the money's definitely there before you send it again right good <laughs> right. <laughs> um is that everything you want to say on uh, nuts and bolts mechanics of moving your money before we move on to the comparison with banks uh -huh. I think that's probably all we've co I've covered. As I said, I think it's more a case of just getting people, as I said, thinking about this sooner because mm. you have more options, whether that be the exchange rate, but more importantly, it's the process about moving the money and making that easier if you have moved to Portugal and things like that. Just bearing that in mind um, can really help. As I said, it's only because I, I see it with clients that are moving to Portugal that they are looking to buy euros. I mean, one customer bought some euros um, because he knew he was going over to view properties. And he said he just wanted the money there so that if he saw a property, he could go straight away and say, I'll take it. Very good. So again, everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different. So, you know, there's a solution for you. Well, you make a good point there as well. You're doing this all day long with, with many different people uh, from your point of view. For, for a lot of the um, users of the service, it'll be the first time they've done it. So they can have mm. the benefit of, of your experience. Um, with working with so many people uh, day after day as well. Um, I think so that's, that's the thing is just being able to speak to someone. I mean, that's what I see when I watch the Dream Team, even in the other services. Yeah. You know, it's just every there's a lot. I mean, certainly these obviously in tax, there are, you know, so much more complicated than this. And, you know, being able to speak to someone is invaluable. Um, yeah. And I would say the same is for this service and others on the Dream Team. Which sounds like a, a good moment to mention the Dream Team session coming up in about 55 minutes where there will be a panel of people who you can talk to about all aspects of moving to Portugal. So um, we'll provide the link for that um, in due course so that you can join us on a separate link. It's not on this uh, particular uh, call link. It's on a different one. We'll get that into the chat for you. So then let's move on. Oh, one more thing on the mechanics. So Jackie's mentioning there, don't forget to keep your US phone number for third party verification because that could be very awkward if you leave and think, well, I don't need this phone anymore. Um, I'll just cancel it. That can be a big, I mean, as, as, as well as a, a bit of mental clutter being cleared that could cause you a lot of problems so make sure that's not gonna uh, be necessary for you as a way of uh, doing some extra verification on security can, there. I, can i add something to that of course you can, jackie Go um, ahead. one of the things we discovered was that apple phones has um a product where you could get your apple phone and i have to get the name of the product but where you could use your Apple phone to connect to wireless, your home wireless or any other wireless system. So it's, it's a different type of product than you're used to using it for Apple phone. Most people don't know about it. So it's a lot cheaper. And again, it's not the same Apple phone that you go and you know you have all your data. It's not like that. We use an Apple phone that connects to our wireless at home for the simple purpose of third-party verification and keeping oh. our U.S. phone number. Okay. So check that out. <laughs> will you be able to put that in the forum, uh, Jackie? I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get the, the exact the name of the product, and yeah. so everyone... So you don't need a, you don't need the phone part of the service, the signal. As long as it's on Wi-Fi, you'll be able to do that third-party... Uh, and, and it's significantly separate. less expensive. Very good to know. That's a great tip. Thank you for that. And if you could, uh, if, if if you can pop it in the chat tonight, that'd be great. But otherwise, it'll be in the forum um, for people to pick up over at Expats. I'll, I'll put it in right now. Good on you. Thank you for that, Jackie. Um, so last uh, key point then. This is the comparison with the banks, uh, Sarah. And that old chestnut. I'll just use my bank because it's free. Yes, we hear that a lot as well. Uh, people will say, oh, my bank said it's free. No, the, what the bank is saying is that maybe they'll offer you free transfer, but it's not actually in the exchange rate. When they come to actually make the conversion, that's where you'll see the difference and that's where it will cost you. Um, so it's never free through the bank. Nothing's free through the bank. 
from the bank. No, so so uh, true, true. that is, yeah, that yeah. is not the case when they're saying it's free. Um, it's just the, the, the terminology. Um, and it's usually around transfer fees rather than actually the exchange rate. And what not not only charge. is it not free, it's actually not that competitive often, is it, when the bank do it? No, and, and the other thing as well is it's always good to compare, um, but generally we see a 3 to 4% difference. We've seen one client um, I spoke to, which again, you know, obviously we're relying on what people are telling us, but I spoke to this client who'd moved to Portugal. Um, I think they'd been there about six months. They hadn't used this, they'd used their bank. And one of the things they said was they wished that they'd, looked into this and taxes more than what they did that's yeah. what he said he yeah. used bank of america they charged him about five percent um so it is it is it is expensive well william i think four points cost at my bank i'm, I'm that sounds painful if i'm if i if i'm interpreting that correctly uh william um and uh we'll come back to you on that because that's that's interesting as, as a little yes it is painful <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, I'm sorry to hear that, by the way. I shouldn't laugh. Um, and yeah, and it can be clunky with the banks, can't it? It's, it's like it, it, their own special, they treat us all like muggles, don't they? It's their own special magical world of banking and you're not invited. Um, and so something like even the exchange rate, uh, you don't often know, do you, what you're signing up for? Well, it's weird because they are quite antiquated and even more <laughs> yeah. so a little bit than I expected in America because it it really filters down to state by state. That's what's even more confusing. It can be more confusing because someone can bank with exactly the same bank, but in a different state. So yeah. they then charge something different or, again, completely different experience that they have. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but I think with the banks, um, a couple of things. Again, yes, if we focus on the exchange rate on the day, that's where you're looking at a saving some banks are more competitive than others, but it's actually the other side is the process. And as far as you don't actually know what the rate is up front, because what hap they can give you a quote, but what happens is they can't actually, you can't lock in that rate. So say I spoke to my bank teller on the phone and said, great, let's go ahead with that. That's not the rate that I'll get. I mean, I might be lucky and the rate might not change and I might get that rate, but what happens is then they process the payment and then whenever it goes through, whether it be, today tomorrow if you've missed the bank cut off time yes whatever that rate is when that money goes through that's the rate that you get now as i said if the rate doesn't move you might be fine if the rate moves you might be better off and it's great you get more euros it's um been, which is know. great if it's going to your account if it's not you're sending more euros to somebody else or yeah. the worst case scenario is it's 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 um dropped and you're not getting as many euros and therefore the payment that you're trying to make is short now, again, fine if you were, you know, sending it to your own account, but say you're paying lawyers fees, then you've got to make another transfer. But then again, if it's for a property, could you miss your deadline? That's, because actually, yes, yeah. I paid you some money, but I'm, I don't know. Sure. It's not all there. It's not all, it's not there, all there. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's not good, is it? Very, so, very, very year 2000 with the banks. You know, there was a time where you would take a check in, for example. And I've done this back in the day in Australian dollars, I think it was. And you just have to sign it over and they'll give you what they want to. <laughs> Basically, nothing's agreed, <laughs> is it? They just give you what the exchange rate is because it sits in a little in tray by the side of the teller until they're ready to process it. Quite bizarre. So you can avoid that with Spartan FX as well. Um, anything else clunky about the banks that we should know about? Um, that ultimately, you need a destination for your euros. So you have to have someone to pay to, whether it be your own account or whether it be to a third party. So as we've discussed before, in some cases, it might be ideal that you might want to start making some exchanges into euros to benefit from the rate, but you can't actually do that through your bank because you need somewhere to actually put that, put um, that money. Okay. And yeah. with the banks, there can be delays because, say, for example, you use us and you are actually sending money from your bank. So you're saying to me, well, I'm saying the bank's going to send your US dollars to us. That is quicker because they're sending US dollars. Now, if they were to exchange the money into euros, then generally, sort of obviously technical, they they do what we call a spot transfer, which is a buy now, pay now. And generally, they probably do a two day spot, the bank. So they it takes them longer to do that transfer because the exchange, they're doing it over two days, for example. So factoring that in and then sending the money, that's where you're on to like at least a couple of days more, maybe a week. Um, some it might only be three days. It depends on the bank, as I said, 
there's no real control over that. Some might do it quicker, some may take a little bit longer. So your time frames are a little bit unknown, which is why that's the only thing I was saying about if you've got a deadline, always kind of be factoring that in a little bit that it could take a little bit longer. Um, just with the way the bank exchanges the money and then sends it out. Good to know. Thanks, Sarah. OK, well, let's draw this to a close on the recording. We've got a couple of questions and points to uh, consider. And it's gone from pain to pleasure for William. When I shifted to Spartan, I sent US dollars and saved 50 percent on exchanges. So nice to hear that. Thank you for that feedback, William. Uh, Diana is saying thanks for the very understandable explanation, Sarah. Last week, we learned about FBAR and FATCA reporting for US taxpayers. How does this relate to Spartan accounts? What FBAR and or FATCA reporting might we need to be mindful about? Good question from Diana. Yes. I mean, essentially, we the account you have with us is almost like having your Portuguese bank account. So it will need to be reported on because it still is an account. Um, we don't share any information with anybody. So it is all down to you. Um, so we're not reporting to anyone and sharing any of your information in that aspect. Um, but where I've seen with clients with the FBAR is usually um, they send us a list of questions. We answer them and we send the, the answers back to you. We send a lot of documentation. We've got a lot of proof of the accounts, proof of the money transfer. So we can really help support with all the information that you need to fill in the FBAR. But it is your responsibility to fill it in. But we provide as much information and as help as we can for you to do that. There you go, Diana. Uh, over to uh, Donovan. I get monthly checks from Social Security and a retirement pension. Does that money have to come to Portugal every month or can I save up and wait for a favor favorable exchange rate? That's a good question as well from Donovan, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, again, it's all about your situation. Um, over the years, even before dealing with, with people moving to Portugal, I've dealt with them moving around the world. And, you know, it depends on your situation. If it's a a regular payment and it's a mortgage then you generally have to pay it every month because you've got a deadline if it's a pension for example do you need it every month to live on then it has to go every month if you don't then you've got more flexibility because then you have the luxury of thinking okay i can save up a bit i mean with us it doesn't make any difference what you transfer the rates that we give you is still competitive and it'll be across any amount it's not a case of you transfer a small amount we give you one rate if you transfer a larger sum, we'll give you a better rate. It's it's a very fair, yeah. um, but obviously it is around the exchange rate movement. So you've probably got a little bit more flexibility to watch out for a better rate of exchange or monitor those rates because you are you don't need the money every month or all the time. So you have a little bit more flexibility just to really depend on what's happening with the rate, to be honest. All right, so get those red braces on, Donovan, and watch the movements and exchange when you want to. Um, and finally, then, before we go to uh, more private and personal questions, uh, one from Larry here. I am waiting for my bank in Portugal to open my account in time for my meeting with VFS next week. I do not have wire transfer information for my new account yet, but expect it sometime next week. Can I transfer the money that I want to transfer to my new account to Spartan now so that it will be more available when I do have my wire transfer account number. So there'd be like a holding um, situation there or sort of bridging transfer. Is Are you OK with that, uh, Sarah? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we, we as I said, we can hold any currency that we can trade on account. Um, um, and often we can hold um, same like US dollars or euros or pounds or Canadian, whatever you need. Sometimes it's a case of someone sold a house, for example, and um, in the US or in Canada, or in the UK, and the lawyer sent the money directly to us and we've held it, you know, so there's lots of different options that we can hold the money until you actually need it um, for really as long as you want. The only difference is it isn't a bank account as far as there's no interest earned, but usually yes. it's, it's more convenience that we're offering the rate. Also, where is your money based? So there's a couple of things that we can do. I mentioned about fixing the rate for future payment. Now, in order to do that, we just need 10% of the amount you need to fix. It's not a cost or a charge, but it just fixes the rate because we buy all the money up front as a sort of security for us. And then we pay the money out when you need it. So sometimes yeah, some customers may be where their money is sat in a maybe high interest bearing account and they might not want to exchange all of their money into euros because actually, yes, they'll benefit from the rate, but they're getting interest as well. They don't want to miss out on that. Then you kind of can get a little bit of the best of both worlds there. Again, it depends on where your money is and what that, that situation looks like. Yeah. Um, with the regular payments, the other thing that you could do is for 12 months, we can fix the rate 
for the full amount. So say, for example, you were getting $1,000 a month and that equates to $12,000 over 12 months. So you could fix the rate for $12,000 over the 12 months and then you just pay the money as you need it and just draw down every month or how often you need it, the amount that you need. Very good. Okay, thanks, Jacqueline, Jackie and uh, Debbie for the information in the chat about the uh, iPhone situation and uh, wireless calling. That's really helpful. Just a, just a quick supplementary to Larry's question. When I this because I think this will be helpful to everybody. Uh, when I wire transfer money from my bank in the USA to Spartan, who determines the exchange rate? It's basically a quote, isn't it? That you'll be given from Spartan FX and you can choose whether you want that quote or not. Anything you'd like to add to that, Sarah? Yeah, absolutely. You have full control. Yeah. Um, you decide we'll give you a quote and if you're happy with it that's when we will book the rate for you we don't just do that um as i said there is some options where i've touched on where we do orders um some can be firm orders so you could actually specify a certain rate of exchange and as soon as it hits that rate we will automatically buy for you um but otherwise that it is then complete but again that's still a decision that you've made yeah. uh, otherwise we can give you a quote and you agree to go ahead with that or not there you go, Larry. So a couple of bits of feedback then, which is great a great point to conclude on. Earlier this week, I made a transfer of the remaining funds I had held in my Spartan FX account to my new Portuguese account. Well done, LaRonda. Easy as pie is the review there. Um, today's wire transfer at my local credit union was a bit more stressful. It was the teller's first international transfer. So that was down to the credit union and their lack of experience. But uh, obviously Spartan FX help with you all the way if you need that sort of support and only a phone. Well, that, 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 I think that's the, the thing is that when you're speaking with a bank teller that has no experience, you know, if you were just using your bank, then you're on your own. You're yeah. the one that's got to go into that bank or speak to that bank teller and tell them what to do. Yeah. Or, or they're asking you more questions. And regardless of whether you transfer it to us or anybody else, um, you know, if you were sending it to a third party, I know I get it myself. Again, they've really stepped up. They ask you so many questions about, are you sure you want to send this money? Is this company legitimate? And it just goes on and on. And sometimes it's actually quite frightening. Really? But it is the case yeah. of the companies are legitimate. It's just this is what the bank's doing now to protect themselves um, so that to make sure that, you're you're the one that said that you want to send this money if it's not the right account or there's something goes wrong then they are not <laughs> at risk because you're the one yeah, that you've asked the questions yeah. and you've decided to do it um but again i think it's around a case of more and more around since covid that, that they've really upped that game i mean even um neil who you've seen sometimes he was transferring money um to one of his accounts that he's transferred to before and oh, again, and it's just sort of are you sure you definitely want to transfer it's like it's my account <laughs> you know so yes. it does happen but as i said when you're sending to any third party it can be quite daunting because then yeah. you start to worry and think well should i be sending it there is they legitimate so again it's just if you weren't using somebody and there was no one else to speak to and you're encountering these sort of things on your own Again, yes. that can be quite it, you can begin to doubt yourself. Absolutely. So th that help is there. And finally, then, um, love using Spartan FX, says Matthew. Steve is great. And we'll come to that question. It's just come in from Larry in just a moment after we've thanked Sarah. Um, sorry to keep quizzing you for so long. I mean, we've talked no, that's fine. about Any questions? I, I didn't imagine that we'd have so much to talk about. But there you go. That's the world of currency and all the little nuances uh, that you may face and things you need to know about. So, Sarah, for the time being, thank you very much indeed. Excellent session. No problem. Thank you. I think Larry's just got one question, which about um, should I transfer money to Spartan from my USA bank? Should I send it in dollars or euros? Definitely in dollars. OK, um, because basically we're doing the conversion. That's yeah. where you're saving the money. Um, yes. Whereas if you get your bank to send it in euros, they're the ones that are making the exchange. And that's where you've got no control. So over native them. currency. Native so it's currency. definitely US dollars that you're sending to us. Yeah. And any help you need with that, Larry and anyone else, anyone who's still a little bit, you know, this might be the first time people have done this could well be um, open your account, have a chat with the uh, people who are spoken of so fondly uh, by uh, by clients um, and they'll guide you through that, Larry. So there's no need to be concerned uh, and you can get some some reassuring help at the other end of a phone, which you don't get with many other currency transfer services. We haven't even mentioned that, have we? The level of customer service with Spartan. Um, you'll hear about this time after time with clients of Spartan FX and, and uh, in this community of Expats Portugal. So for the time being, let's ask um, some of those questions you didn't want to ask live on air, everybody. Thank you uh, for the time being. Great job, Sarah. Cheers. Thank you.